Jamel Hill is one of the most recognizable names in sports journalism. She opens up about her life in her new book, Uphill, a memoir, which chronicles her career rise while also reflecting on her public dispute with former President Donald Trump and its immediate fallout. Now joining us now is Jamel Hill. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. So the first question I have to ask is why now? Why did you decide that this was the perfect time to release this memoir? I've got this dream of being a fiction writer. I didn't want to write about myself. Maybe part of it is thinking about the things you have to unpack and the discomfort and the vulnerability. Like those were all very scary things to me. And so um, the market decided. My, my literary agent was just like, hey, listen, this is the story that the publishers want to hear. And so I said, OK, I'll just buckle down, bear with it and just go for it. And you definitely go there. You talk about your final days at ESPN, which is owned by your parent company, Disney. You Correct. talk about your childhood, the early days. You also talk about your career and the early days in your career. Um, why did you decide that all those experiences, or how did you choose which experiences to share? So even though I know to some degree, because of my time at ESPN, as you mentioned, which is under the ABC umbrella, like a, a lot of people know me from that. I was there at ESPN for 12 years. It's the best job that I've, I've ever had. And while our parting was awkward, I would say, there was so much of my life that I, there were so many experiences in my life that happened way before I got to ESPN. So I thought it was just important that people get a fuller picture of who I am and not just the lady that was on Sports Center, <laughs> and not just the person who went against Donald Trump. Definitely. And we do have to talk about uh, the incident that you just mentioned. At the height of your career at ESPN, or your time at ESPN, you found yourself in a firestorm where you sent a tweet um, regarding President Donald Trump, and you even had then Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders calling for you to be fired. Can you tell me what was going through your mind at that moment? So what wasn't going through my mind uh, was ESPN company policy in terms of social media. There was a policy, just so people know. I just, I, you know, as I say to, to, have said to people since, is that if I actually realized what I was tweeting would create the level of firestorm that it did, I probably would not have tweeted it. Um, just because of uh, the fact of the position my show at the time was in, understanding what the collateral damage was that maybe I might have thought twice. I don't regret it, so people shouldn't um, read it that way. And you also talk about how you can't really separate sports from uh, from politics as well. So did you notice that in that sense after the, the backlash that you received that the two go hand in hand? They always have. And the thing is that we have to be careful about what we put in the political bag and what I consider to be just about human dignity. Racism is not politics to me. Racism is just a simple right or wrong. And that does not deserve to be put in the politics bag because politics means that there's a pro and a con. Is there a pro to racism that, I don't, that I'm unaware of? So what are you exactly arguing against? Very interesting perspective. Um, and you right now are a contributing uh, writer for The Atlantic and you also host the popular podcast Unbothered. What's next? I want to make sure that I create things that will uplift other black women in particular and make a space. Because when I came into this business, looking at the diversity in sports media, it was disappointing and embarrassing. I mean, at one point when I was a sports columnist, I was the only black female sports columnist at a daily newspaper in North America. So I want to create something where black women their voices can be heard. So that's why with Spotify, I've created the Unbothered Network, which is a podcast center for black women, black women led. And we're launching our first two podcasts in the first two weeks in November. So I'm really happy to be able to be in a position to create opportunities for others. What do you hope that the people reading take away from your memoir? Two main things I hope people take away from. One is that your, your circumstances do not dictate the purpose and the life you imagine for yourself. Regardless of what I faced as a child and growing up, is like, that's not an excuse not to succeed. The other thing I hope people take away is why your people are still here, be it a grandmother, auntie, mother, father, whoever it is, ask them about their lives. So I hope people take away from this. Ask your people everything while they're here. That is a word while they're still here. Thank you so much, Jamal, <laughs> for joining us. And Uphill, a memoir, will be available to purchase wherever books are sold beginning tomorrow. And we did reach out to ESPN. They declined to comment.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.